Another two weeks passed until it was Valentine's Day. Okua spent the day with Atsumu, Osamu and Sakusa at Atsumu and Sakusa's home. The twins as well as Suno and Sakusa didn't care about Valentine's Day which is why this day was like any other for them. Suno was out of town that week for some training camp, so Osamu spent practically every day with Atsumu. Although the two brothers often argued, they couldn't be without each other. Samu let's make dinner. I said I'll make dinner. But my rice balls are better than yours. In what universe? You've never beaten me at cooking Tsumu. Ha. Huh. Watch me. Osamu and Atsumu ran to the kitchen to prepare dinner. They are still super competitive. Okua and Sakusa laughed at the twins who were still arguing. Hey Carver. Hum. I never thanked you for bringing me back to my senses when I had that stupid fight with Atsumu last year. Thanks. A lot. It's nothing. Sakusa smiled with gratitude at Oikoa. It's not nothing. Oikoa literally saved their relationship, which led to the two of them getting married next year. Sakusa may be jealous of Oikoa here and there, but he was truly grateful to him for saving their relationship. He knew that he always wanted the best for Atsumu. His expression became serious again as he began to speak. Oikoa Toru. Sakusa? Do you still love him? Oikoa's smile faded. He had a sad expression on his face and stared into nothingness. Flashback. May, 2022. Oikoa picked up Atsumu from the airport as he was going to visit him for three weeks. The league in Japan had just ended and they had a month off, while there was one more match in Argentina before the break. In August, the FIVB Volleyball Men's World Championship would start in Rome and the teams usually start with practice a month before the tournament begins. Oikoa was on the lookout for his best friend when he finally saw the blonde boy walking in Oikoa's direction with his luggage. A bright smile appeared on both their faces as Atsumu suddenly ran in Oikoa's direction. Just as Atsumu reached him he let go of all his luggage and prepared to leap into Oikoa's arms, which were wide open to catch Atsumu. He swung his arms around Oikoa's neck and squeezed his legs around his waist, pressing him into a deep embrace. Their eyes filled with tears from sheer joy. Finally I receive my hug. Hey Tsum Tsum. Hey Carver. Atsumu slowly put his feet on the ground without letting go of the tight hug. He could feel that Oikoa had lost weight. He could feel how thin he was, which brought more tears to his face. It had been 8 months since the breakup. Atsumu was so happy to see his best friend again, and at the same time he was so sad to see what condition he was in. You could tell that Oikoa was not well at all. Oikoa took a deep breath and finally pulled Atsumu out of the hug to look him in the eyes. He gave him a warm smile. God, I missed you so much. Oikoa said with tears streaming down his face. He pulled Atsumu back into another tight hug. 2. Atsumu mumbled into Oikoa's shoulder. You look like shit. Oikoa let out a laugh. So do you. They stood there holding each other for a few more minutes until they let go and walked to Oikoa's car, left the airport and drove to his house. Atsumu meant what he said, but so did Oikoa. Sure, Oikoa looked bad, but Atsumu didn't look that good either. Oikoa knew that he and Sakusa had been fighting quite a bit lately, and just as Atsumu was about to visit Oikoa, he told him that they had gotten into a huge fight. But Oikoa hadn't expected it to be that bad. Atsumu had already made it clear that he didn't want to talk about it. How was your flight? Way too long. But I'm actually not that tired. Let's do something fun. The weather looks so nice. Sure thing. We have plenty of time. Are you coming to our last match before the break tomorrow? Or do you think you'll be too tired? Hell yeah I'm coming. When was the last time I actually saw you play? Atsumu grinned and so did Oikoa. Otsumu those three weeks are going to be the best. You bet. I've got tickets for you. You have the best seat I swear. Hope so. Totally need to spy on you. The two were so excited to see each other again and had the best time. The next day Atsumu cheered Oikoa in his last game of the season. It was already decided that CA San Juan had won this season, yet they gave their best in the last match. Atsumu watched them closely because Oikoa was still a kind of rival for him. They already won the first two sets and it was only a matter of time until they'd win the last one too as they were obviously the better team. Oikoa truly ruled the court. He is clearly an amazing setter. Their ace smashed the ball into the court as he received a perfect toss from his captain. Only one point was missing and it was Oikoa's turn to serve. He's gotten so much better over the last few years, it's unbelievable. He focused on the ball and completely switched off his surroundings. His thoughts were solely on this match, focused on this ball, focused on the final point, that nothing could snap him out of his trance. With that, he threw the volleyball into the air, took a few steps, jumped and slammed it into the opponent's court with tremendous force. 
Atsumu's chin dropped and his eyes widened. His body trembled and his expression changed to an envious smile. Ha. Huh. Although you were so strong during the whole match, you didn't even give 100% yet. Oi Kora, yeah really not an opponent I wanna play against. Atsumu groaned annoyed, not realizing what he had just seen. There was absolutely no chance to get this ball and with that Ace Oikora decided the match. The whole team cheered, and Atsumu did too. Oikora formed a fist and raised it in the air with a beaming smile. He is the captain and he has made his team unbeatable. Volleyball is his passion and he has managed to carry everyone along. You get captivated just by watching him. Atsumu had a bright smile on his face. He was so proud of Oikora. He loved to see him like this. The next few days passed by quickly. They went sightseeing as Oikora wanted Atsumu to see as many things as possible and of course they played beach volleyball almost every evening. Atsumu posted a picture on Heikaiagram. They enjoyed each other's company and the time passed way too fast. They both felt so happy for quite some time, but Oikora knew that something was still going on in Atsumu's mind. It was uncommon. He had absolutely no contact with Sakusa, and he didn't say a word about his Omiomi. Atsumu glanced at his phone every now and then, only to put it away in disappointment. He checked his Heikaiuagram post with him and Oikora that he had put online a few days ago, but no sign of Sakusa. No like. No comment. Nothing. Atsumu's vision blurred, he realized that tears were welling up in his eyes. Oh fuck him. He threw away his phone and settled down on his bed. Oikora had witnessed the situation and sat down next to Atsumu, who hadn't noticed him yet. He hugged Atsumu from behind and the blonde gasped in shock, now realizing it was Oikora. It's okay to cry Tsumu. Let it all out. Atsumu loosened up a bit and continued to cry. He turned around and buried his face in Oikora's chest. I I'm s sorry. Atsumu sobbed. Oikora hugged him even tighter and ran a hand through Atsumu's hair to comfort him. It's okay. He whispered. He didn't know what was going on, but he felt so sorry for Atsumu. He didn't want him to suffer so much. Whatever had happened needed to be fixed. Why are you so hurt, Tsumu? I it's just, I'm so scared. Scared? Oikora whispered and tried to follow. Atsumu was still burying his head in Oikora's chest. He held his best friend tightly until he finally looked up at Oikora. His eyes. His eyes were full of fear and sadness. What the hell? What the hell did you do to Tsumu, Sakusa? I'm scared that Omi-kun will leave me as soon as I come back. Oikora's eyes widened in shock. Tsumu. Why should he? He loves you. I'm not sure about that anymore. He was so angry and jealous when I left. What do you mean? Atsumu remained silent but tears still streamed down his face. Oikora tried to calm him down a little. Ever since Oikora broke up with Iwezumi, Atsumu and Sakusa had been fighting more and more because of Sakusa's jealousy. I bet that's what started the fight just before Atsumu left to visit me. Whatever you were arguing about, I bet Sakusa already regrets it. He loves you, with all his heart and he can't think of a life without you. I mean who could, Tsumu, you're adorable. Oikora wiped away some tears from Atsumu's face. Maybe you should just call him tomorrow. Get a few things straight. I bet this is just a big misunderstanding and we both know Sakusa. He sucks at communication. Atsumu chuckled. Whatever happened between you two, nothing has the right to make you unhappy in any way. I am always here to talk to you, to listen to you. Atsumu you deserve to be happy. All right. Atsumu couldn't stop the tears from flowing and just nodded. Oikora kissed him on the forehead and pulled him close. I love you and it hurts to see you like this. I want you to be happy. Forever. Atsumu gripped Oikora's shirt and hugged him even tighter. He couldn't say a word and just let his feelings be until he was so exhausted that he fell asleep. It was about 2 a.m. in Argentina when Oikora reached for his phone to text Sakusa while still holding Atsumu and making sure he was sleeping soundly. Chat between Kayumi and Oikora. Sakusa Kayumi. Oikora. Do you still love him? What? Do you still love Atsumu? Of course. What a dumb question. Is it that dumb? Why is he crying in my arms because of you if you love him that much? What? Sakusa. I don't know what happened and I actually don't even want to know. It's none of my business. But if my best friend is crying himself to sleep because of you, then something is really fucked up. And by that I mean you fucked up. I don't care what you were fighting about, but Sakusa, for God's sake, let go of your fucking jealousy. He's my best friend and I'll always take care of him and right now it's you who's hurting him the most. He deserves to be happy and if you are the one to make him happy, then fucking do it. Sakusa let that sit for a moment but Oikora started typing again. 
You know, if you keep pushing him away like that, you might really lose him. Atsumu is childish, loud, clingy, annoying, but also sweet, cute, careful. I love him. Especially because of all these things. Then tell him. He needs to hear it or he'll go insane. I will. Don't make him unhappy Sakusa. I won't. I will never, I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize to me, just make sure he gets his smile back. I will. With that Okua put his phone away and tried to sleep as well. The next morning, Okua made some pancakes for him and Tsunu. He couldn't sleep that well and got up early. Finally he saw the blonde boy sitting at the table with a wide grin on his face. His cheeks flushed and damn, he was happy and relieved as hell. I smell pancakes. Okua gave him a kiss on his cheek and put some on his plate. Carver yeah the best. Okua giggled. Someone's happy today. Omi Omi called. What did he say? He apologized. Damn, he was really sorry for the whole fight. He didn't want to push me away and he certainly didn't want the whole thing to escalate like that. We talked for a while, I think everything is good now. I'm glad you're okay now some sum. If he ever makes you sad again, I'll stab him. He'd better know, thanks Carver. They both laughed. It was a relief to see Atsumu like that. The last few days passed until Atsumu had to leave again. Okura took him to the airport and said goodbye to him. They hugged each other and let a few tears stream down their faces. Fortunately we'll see each other again at the FIVB Volleyball Men's World Championship in August. But after that, don't let it be another year Carver. I won't. You really need to come back to Japan. The others miss you too. Soon enough I will. I miss you already Tsumu. The last few weeks have been amazing. I really needed that. Atsumu pulled away from the hug and caressed Oikoa's cheeks. Both of them were still crying. Oikoa Toru don't forget that you also deserve to be happy. Oikoa stared into Atsumu's eyes and gave him a warm but sad smile. He wrapped his arms around his best friend. I love you Tsumu. More. With that, Atsumu let go and made his way to the gate. End of flashback. Do you still love him? Oikoa's smile faded. He had a sad expression on his face and stared into nothingness. Shut up. Okura said in a harsh tone. He didn't mean to be so rude, but Iwazumi is still his soft spot. What if he still has feelings for you? Okura turned his gaze to Sakusa. Okura looked pale, almost sick. The only feelings he has for me are madness and anger. And you know what? I can't blame him, that's okay. But please. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to get my hopes up for something that will never ever happen. Just let it be. What if there is a chance? We broke up for a reason. That reason hasn't changed so there's no chance at all. Would you stop now? Oikoa, sorry Sakusa, but I'm tired of hearing that there might still be a chance. No, there isn't. Not for our friendship and certainly not for us as a couple. Oikoa got up and went to see how the twins were progressing in the kitchen. He no longer wanted to talk about a possible relationship with Iwazumi. It just hurt him, especially since he had met him a few weeks ago and since he knew that Iwazumi didn't want him around. There's no chance. Not at all. He knew that his friends only meant the best for him, but he just didn't want to hear all of that. Dinner passed and the atmosphere was somehow tense since Sakusa and Okura had been talking. But that didn't bother the twins. They were fooling around as usual. How long will you need the crutches? According to Matson, I should be able to walk completely without them in a week. If I continue like this, it could be earlier. Oh that's great. He yes, the recovery is going really well. Madsen is pretty surprised too. Okura chuckled and scratched the back of his head. If you keep this up, you'll really be able to play in the world championship. Absolutely. Did you think I was kidding? I worked my ass off. I want to beat you so bad. Okura grinned and Sakusa scoffed. The tense atmosphere loosened up. Last time I was with you, you were definitely at your best. Carver, don't tell me you've got more tricks up your sleeve. Haha <laughs> it's been a while. We didn't even see each other at the FIVB championship because my team got kicked out by Shoyus and yours got kicked out by Kajimus. TSK. Don't make me remember that. Oh damn that was humiliating. Well, you guys just sucked. Osamu grinned as soon as team advanced one round further than the other teams. Shut up Samu. The friends enjoyed the evening and talked deep into the night. It was already late when Okura wanted to go home. Are you sure you don't need help getting home? I'm fine Tsumu, don't worry. I'll write to you when I get to the hotel. Deal. Okura gave Atsumu, Osamu and Sakusa a hug and headed home. He looked at his phone to check the time. It was past midnight. 
His hotel room was not that far away and Oiko enjoyed the night breeze. It was a bit cold since it was still February, but it somehow cleared Oikoa's head three weeks have passed since Oiko arrived in Tokyo and his ankle is really starting to get better. Fortunately. On his way home, Oikoa passed a small bar. Someone opened the door and collided with Oikoa, causing him and the stranger to fall to the ground. Oikoa tapped his injured foot unhappily, causing him to hiss in pain. Oh my god I'm sorry. Oikoa's eyes widened when he heard the voice. He froze and couldn't say a word. The man touched his shoulder and was about to help him stand up when Oikoa turned around and faced the man. Hajime. 